Hello, everybody. <laughs> How are you? Good morning. It is Awaken Your Relationships this morning, and I am Julie Murphy, and I wrote a book called Awaken Your Wealth. And so I'm the money chick, and I don't have a whole lot to do with relationships directly, but indirectly, money is the result of everything else going on in your life. So I started this awakening series to really help people tune into their health situation, their relationships, their soul and their spirit and their work life, because those are the, the areas in our life where we are acting out what is unresolved within ourselves. And so I always talk about that we need to build our wealth from the inside out and then all the money shows up, but sustainably sticks and stays. That's the key. Like a lot of people are income affluent, but they're not asset affluent because it keeps flowing in and flowing out and flowing in and flowing out. And we create these debt levels or up and down, up and down. It's because a lot of it is because of what is going on with our relationships. So Rita has helped me in my personal world um, for the last year or so. And um, she's helping thousands of people actually get into healthy relationships. And so today we wanted to talk about her seven day challenge that she's going to be doing because it's time for us all to be super happy, no more miserable. And there are things that we do not have to put up with and that we can create exactly what we desire in our lives. So Rita, tell mm -hmm. everybody about yourself. Well, you know, I've been doing this for 14 years and I got into um, helping women with relationships because I had trauma in my past and I've been, uh, I, I spent my life trying to fix myself. Right. You know, I went, I did shamanic work. I went to Asian medicine. I became a healer. I, you know, did drum circles. I led programs. I did sweat lodges. I, you know, we did energy healing. I would take singing bowls up into the mountains and play on the side of a cliff. You know, I mean, awesome. we did gong baths. I was, I, you oh. know, I, I've smudged everything a million times. Um, you know, I've created my own blends, all of it. Oh my gosh. I dove into this stuff and I, um, and, and I was doing it and helping all these other women, but on the outside, when I would go and help them all, I would feel great. Mm. And I would feel like I was helping and I was changing their life. And right. then as soon as they were gone, I felt like a fraud because oh. I was anxious and depressed mm. and conflicted you know, because I'd wake up anxious, I'd wake up not in a good mood, and I couldn't figure out why. Mm. And, you know, so you just keep digging, you're like, well, maybe I need to meditate more, try to meditate, maybe I need <laughs> to do more ceremony. <laughs> right? Yeah, you spend your whole life fixing yourself. And, yeah, and no, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Because we're um, perfect in exactly yeah. who it is that we are. And that's what yeah. we don't understand. That we are yeah. actually perfect, but we keep trying to, like, do things like to fix ourselves but if we just understood that the way that we are created in ourselves with our authentic talents mm -hmm. we're perfect mm -hmm. the problem mm -hmm. is is that we have these traumas that then cause us to play out these roles and these stories right and and it's and we have no control over it right you know i used to trigger um if a car would pull into the driveway Mm -hmm. immediately my stomach would clench and my heart would start to beat faster because when I was a kid, you know, I, it was scary to have my dad come home, right? you know, or I would freak out and have panic attacks. If even, you know, into my thirties, if I heard someone walking across the floor on the floor above me, you know, like if I was on a lower floor and I'd hear footsteps, I'd immediately go into fight or flight right. and a lifetime of, you know, dealing with people who, um, we're dealing with their own problems, made me trained my brain and trained my body to go there in an instant. So I was constantly triggering about anything and everything. And I would hide things and I would protect myself and I would lie about stuff because yep. I just didn't want people to, um, to trigger me, you know, because I was constantly, I was constantly anxious. I'm like, I can't, I can't handle what's happening to me if somebody gets mad. I just, I physically can't handle it. And so I was still dealing with this. And I said, God, this is a crappy way to live life, you know, to be really successful on the outside, but on the inside still feel like you're being ripped apart. And I know you went through that, you know, with your own life too. Well, and, and we and became super successful on, in some areas. 
Totally. And I remember along the way that you had said something to me going, oh, that person's not a bad person. They're just actually in their own conditioning. And that if you just continue to hold strong boundaries of what is true for you in the inside, then what happens is, is that the best version of them can actually rise to the occasion as well. Yes. Exactly. But it's when you start to get into this thing where it's back and forth and back and forth, it's like, ugh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. no more. You have to decide you want to stop. Yeah. And I decided I, I, I put a flag in the ground and I said, I can no longer live like this. I right. just can't. And as soon as I did that, I realized that there were a lot of tools out there that worked almost immediately. And I, and I realized that the science has been validating a lot of the, um, cultural medicines that I'd been studying all these years. Correct. And the biggest problem was nobody really knew what they were doing. We were trying to adopt other people's, you know, ceremonies and rituals and ideas, but we didn't, we didn't really know how to fit it into our own life, how to make it a part of our own value system or how right. we saw things. And, um, and because I was raised Catholic and uh, I didn't, I wasn't crazy about the Catholic church and all their dogma. I didn't want anything to do with spirituality. You know, I'd study it and I'd studied everybody else, but I wanted the science. And finally, the science is caught up. They actually have merged together. Yeah. Yes, they have. And so now it's repeat. Now I can help. I helped myself and I help women all over the world um, retrain their nervous system so that they can stand in their power. So right. They have the courage to set boundaries. So they don't get triggered inside of themselves anymore. So that right. when someone looks at them funny, their body doesn't say, oh, shit, you know, and then put their, their head down and their blinders <laughs> on. And, you know, I can't look at this. You yeah. know, so it's, true. I help I help people rewire themselves so that um, you really can become that great version that you want to be the same outside as you are inside. Well, and that's where, like you were talking about your seven day challenge that you're having mm -hmm. for people mm -hmm. that yeah. we are coming into the holiday season. So just take life as regular life, let alone all the other things that are going on in the world, right? right? Election, like, pandemic, <laughs> you know, economy. Yeah. Just pick it, right? Protest, riots. All blah, right, blah, yeah. Right? Worldwide. It's, and let's put the holidays on top of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the holidays yeah. often are stressful anyway, because how many times do you hear that people are like, oh, you're going to go spend a bunch of money on a bunch of people that you actually really don't really like spending time with, but you are because you're family. Right. 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 And including sometimes the people who abused you as a kid. Exactly. And then we all have our roles and our patterns and that we all choose to participate in at that level. Cause I really want people to understand like we, it's our choice. So everyone mm -hmm. listening, you know, how you interface is exactly how you chose to interface. Now, mm -hmm. not all of it's always conscious. A lot of it is from our subconscious, but once you become more conscious of some of these layers, mm -hmm. you know, we can step in and start to choose different things to have different mm -hmm. outcomes. Right. And the choice starts with changing how you treat yourself. Talk you know, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people think that the change needs to happen. I need to do something different. I need to say the right thing. I need to, you know, there's all this craziness about being perfect. And if right. I just follow the rules better, then things will turn out better. <laughs> and really it's not, it's, it it's not really about well that. For me. Like I was, yeah. you know what, I got to tell you, you just hit the nail on the head in my world. So I was the girl that never did anything wrong. Right. Did everything right. I yep. tried to please everybody. I was mm -hmm. great at school. I did everything mm -hmm. my parents asked. I never got in trouble. I went to top universities. Yep. I was the good girl. I was the good yep. Irish Catholic girl. I did mm -hmm. everything right. And then Me too. I, couldn't believe, mm -hmm, I couldn't believe that as this was all untangling in my world and I'm like going, why is this happening to me? I've spent my entire life stepping up and doing the right thing for everyone and anyone except for myself. <laughs> yeah. 
we right? were we were brainwashed into thinking that that's how it's supposed to be that a good uh. world is where women sacrifice or the feminine energy sacrifices for everybody else and that's a lie and that's what's totally keeps us trapped in this insanity that we live in it has to start with you deciding you don't want to live like that anymore right and then you start changing your internal world and and that's why i would do shamanism and sweat lodges and everything i t- i kept trying to change my inner experience but it wasn't repeatable you know i'd right. smell essential oil one day and the next day it wouldn't work right. you know or i'd wake up one day and i felt great and the next day i felt like garbage you know it was right. up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down it was terrible and so you know, I was like, I, I just, I can't live like this anymore. I just can't. And mm-hmm. I said, there's got to be another way. And that's when the science started to really step up. And they started right. saying, your trauma is based on your nervous system. And if you want to change, you know, your triggers and not being in fight or flight and not feeling freaked out and going into submissive, you know, when you go home, uh, which I totally did with everything, everything. I totally did that. Felt smaller and smaller and smaller. I yeah, really- you want to talk about that? I had a really good colleague of mine, you know, I'm this dynamic businesswoman in charge, like, looks like I got my shit together, everything on the outside. And I had this one colleague actually I invited because he had kids my kid's age. And I said, why don't you come over for a barbecue? You know, we both live in the city, blah, blah. And we had a, like a Memorial Day barbecue. And, um, and he, he said to me the following week, he goes, well, thanks for coming over and blah, blah. And he goes, Jewel, can I just be really straightforward with you? I was like, sure. He goes, I know you in business and who you are in your household is not who you are in business. What a good friend that was for you. At at the risk of offending you. And if I do, I'm sorry, but you're submissive. And I was like, what? Like I didn't even identify with the definition of the word submissive, but that was the thing that cracked the egg open that all of a sudden I started to realize how I was negotiating myself away mm-hmm. that I wasn't being true. Cause it was just easier. Mm-hmm. And it was, I was becoming the housewife that just put on the pretty picture, even though things were tumultuous underneath. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and then I even realized like when you were talking about how, you know, you were telling the story and I was like, oh, and then even when we were going through our divorce process and the first time I met with the child psychologist that was uh, required from the courts, I was just like, I put roses all over everything. Like everything was, you know, yeah, this is going on, but you know, it's okay. We're all doing our best. And I was just like, and as opposed to like, wow, I was really not being honest with myself with some of the things that were really truly happening. Yes. And yes, um, and it was and and in these households this is the biggest problem that women in narcissistic relationships have. No one believes them. And then yeah. other people who may be in difficult situations, they minimize and they didn't they oh it's not as bad as you think. Oh, you just need to get over it. Oh, you're just too oversensitive. I had people in my family calling my ex-husband that said just want to make sure you're okay with everything that Julie's doing to you. And I was like, you know what? Oh. <laughs> well, then I, I was able, I was in a state at that point where I could right. take a step right. back going, right. Oh, these right. people actually operate in the world similar. And that's okay. That's why I married him. Right. It was familiar. It was familiar. It was mm-hmm. familiar from the house I grew up in to familiar mm-hmm. to what I, who I decided to marry at that time. And he probably smelled familiar too. Yeah. My mom, my mom, I remember my mom saying, Joel, just be easy on him. He's a gentle soul. You know what? As, as, <laughs> as if we're, as if we're bullies. Are well, and really me? it's not that I was a bully. I was just actually trying to stand up for what was true for me. Yes. yes. And you know what? Again, I don't believe that anyone good, bad, or different, you know, we both acted out our conditioning. Like it's, Absolutely. it wasn't me. It wasn't him. It was, we both mm-hmm. participated. And that's the piece that I would really like all of you that are watching to hear is that the minute you can take the step into the fact that you have participated 
So until you choose to participate on a different level, nothing's Mm -hmm. gonna change. And you may evolve together or you may evolve apart. And and really we don't know, it -hmm. takes two to tango, but it's Mm -hmm. about how do you like, and this is why I like your seven um, day Mm -hmm. challenge that you're gonna do, because it's gonna challenge people in their thought process of, hey, I'm going into this holiday season Like, I like what you said earlier. You said, well, you're going to go into Thanksgiving and do you really want Christmas to be the same? And it's like, you, you're in this like five week window of you can change it. Yeah. And you can as a Petri dish for change in your life. Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what? A lot of us need motivation because we don't really believe that change is possible. Change is possible for us you know, and, or, or it's that bad. I mean, you stayed as long in your relationship because it wasn't that bad because you could figure out how to right. cope. It's not like it's he was hitting parts. you. It's not like, yeah, th- there were a lot of, a lot of great parts with it. And I want people to have a crappy Thanksgiving because I want them to realize, <laughs> I want them to be in enough pain, enough well, suffering good. that they, that they make a different choice that they say, yeah. you know what? I don't want to repeat this because that's really the biggest stumbling block is nobody believes because the science hasn't been out there because they haven't publicized it because they have been working with it because they charge, you know, $40,000 for training or whatever. It's like these secret, secret things right. that, that retrain your body to be in a place of calm and centeredness. So you don't have right. to meditate for 15 years. Right. You actually, you can, you can start making these shifts in 60 seconds. It's amazing when I work with women from the beginning to the end of even 15 minutes of how they feel and how they look at the world. And when you learn how to do it for yourself and you make it a habit of, um, of putting yourself first, you find that all your relationships get better. The holidays will be better. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. true. I mean, my, my business has shifted. My family Mm -hmm. relationships have shifted Mm -hmm. and, you know, and the more authentic that I am and being like him, it, it has allowed the space for everyone to elevate. Yeah. And the question is, who's going to be the leader? I say that to my kids all the time. Like when they're name calling and back and forth and they go, Hey, I know they called you something, but who's going to choose to be the leader? I had my oldest actually tell me the other day going, well, I don't want to be a leader. I'd rather call him the name. And I was like, well, see, this is the problem. <laughs> I was like, hilarious. Okay. That's Come hilarious. Then. I know. What if I don't uh, want to be? Like, I never even thought of not being the leader. Like, right? Right, like, exactly. <laughs> well, you were placed into the position. You were like, be the leader or drown. These are my options. I either right. need to figure out how to survive or I'm going to be beaten with clubs like a baby seal. I mean, it's just, those were like your options. So crazy. And in the surviving of yourself, people then look, look at you as a leader because the person who, you know, one of the gifts of trauma is for many women is that they realize that they are in control of their own life. You know what I mean? That if they're going to get out of the despair that they grew up in, whatever it looks like, that they have to do it themselves. I mean, I, I hit my first crash, you know, around 30 when, uh, yeah, you know, when, when I just said, I cannot live like this anymore. And that's when I started on that, you know, quest of, well, let's try shamanism and let's try Asian medicine. And this is great, but I'm still angry all the time. I'm still triggering. I'm still freaking out. Right. And people, this stuff, the, you know, things like shamanism and, and, and Asian medicine, all that, they work beautifully. The, the challenge is, is that it can take lifetimes in order to clean everything up. And the science has shown that it doesn't take lifetimes. It takes 60 seconds. Right. And if you make the right, if you make the right choice at the right time, it creates big shifts. I mean, you went from thinking that you were going to be in an adversarial relationship with your ex for the rest of your existence. And literally covered it's not this live i got a text that i gotta read this did you read it and let, oh great i am I grateful we are in a place of peace from my ex-husband yes. as we're on this thing <laughs> like anyone who knows or heard anything about my story it's like what yeah three years later after all the 
implosion started, mm-hmm. we're at this place of, you know, because it makes all of us feel better. But again, it took someone to be the leader to change yeah. the pattern. Yeah, yeah. So you can attest to the fact that when you do something different, your life really shifts. And that's what the seven day challenge is going to be between Thanksgiving and Christmas, because it really doesn't take a lot of time. There's right. a very specific process I go through. And the process is I get new information. I'll read a book. I'll watch a video. I'll right. talk to somebody. I'll, I'll get new information. And then I spend an hour later on where um, I relax, I feel safe, and any emotion that comes up and makes me feel, oh, no, oh, no, I bring it back to level. I use one of the tools to bring it back to level. And then when you do that, it's like the heavens open up. Suddenly, you can see things clearly. You know, I remember when, when we were yes. talking and you were at your Ooh. kitchen table and you're like, oh my God, I'm in the middle of this craziness. Right. You know, everything is falling apart. How are we going to get through this? And it's like, wait, do these tools and the answers will appear to you. They you don't have do. to figure them out. Right. And it's just taking, I want to tell people, you know, those of you who are listening, it really is just about taking the next right step. Because there were so many things that I had no idea how they would unfold, how they would unpack. But even if it was as simple as I had to complete, at some juncture, I had to completely block my ex-husband's phone number from my phone. Mm -hmm. Because even a text message coming in or an email coming in of whatever he was responding to in his state of being at the time, would just put me in a different place. And when I wanted to be in my own energy and not be triggered, so until I could build the muscle strong enough to not be in the old patterning, I just mm-hmm. literally blocked the phone number. Yeah, yeah. And you that did to. not, that went over like a fart in church. <laughs> <laughs> that did not go over very well. Like the attorneys were alerted and everybody was alerted that who is she to block my number? She's got my kids. Who are you to block someone from pushing your buttons and abusing you and stuff? Who are you? You are yourself. You're an adult woman. But here's what's interesting is that I was like, that's why I bought our children phones. You have full access to your children. You just don't have access to me. Yes. You know, your puppet anymore. And a, a whim. You know, and yes. that the what that did was, and it really none of it was about him. It was about me creating space for myself, yes, so that I could build the emotional muscles and the the nervous system to become more calm and more regulated, yes. so that I can then respond into the new world of how I wanted to create things. Yeah. And now I'm sitting on the other side of that and that has happened. So those of you who are watching that think that, um, God, I don't know. Like, I don't know if I can get it. Trust me, read a little test that I was the one sitting there going, I don't know. Like that was me early on. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm on the other side of it. So yeah. just know whatever your situation is out there, Rita and I are here. We are accessible because a big part of this is knowing that you have a community of people that can support you to the next place of your journey. Yes. And that we don't necessarily know how we're going to get through that. But what I do know for sure is that when you link in with other parts of community, whether it's work with me or work with Rita in terms mm-hmm. of um, trying to find that next right step, um, mm-hmm. you need the supports when you haven't fully built the muscle yourself. Right. Or gotten the trauma off of your system. I mean, one of the biggest challenges is, and you can attest to this is, you know, you talked about when you were in mediation and there's this interminable wait, you know, while the judges were deciding or the mediator, you know, and you had to sit there and you were regulating and regulating and regulating regulating and your body was shaking. You have to get the trauma off your system. And the only way to get it off is trigger and then regulate. Right. Yeah, that was, that was an interesting one where I was in the courtroom with my ex-husband, the whole room, all the attorney teams 
went into private quarters with the judge and it was just the two of us there and it was like the pinnacle of everything and I just literally he kept trying to talk to me and say things to me and I just just wouldn't even respond I stayed in my energy because I didn't want to play the old game I didn't want to be in my because I was definitely triggered I remember like all of a sudden his attorneys would say something and it would just trigger my nervous system and I literally in my mind would go all right god this one's yours and I would just be like yep not mine yep not mine because it was just like I couldn't I knew tactically what the attorneys were trying to do they were trying to trigger me so that I didn't look like a good mom. And I was like, nope, not playing your game. So the attack would come from the litigators. And I just would be like, yep, nope, yep, nope. Like literally, I felt like, have you ever seen that movie with Tom Cruise where it's like a computer screen that's like in thin air? I forget what one, total, no, not total. Anyway, he was like swiping a computer screen right in front of him where he's like, oh, yeah. And that's exactly what it was like. It was just like, oh, the shot came at me. Whoop! I just let it go by me. Whoop! But it's like, you have to choose to detach. And mm -hmm. I just literally just kept swiping it away and being like, nope, not playing the game. Nope, not playing the game. I'm like, this is all about what is the highest and best for me, you, mm -hmm. and the kids. That is what mm -hmm. I have held the entire time. Mm -hmm. but not knowing how the hell we get there. <laughs> right, right. And so right. fortunately, you know, we'd, we'd met by then and you had some good strategies yeah. you know, that you could use to bring yourself back into balance. And, uh, and what happens is you end up with actual physical changes. You'll shake, you'll sweat, you'll fart and burp in church. I mean, you'll, you'll, you'll have these, these physical reactions, but it's really your body detoxing itself. Correct. And, and the only way to get it out of your system is to be triggered and then bring yourself back to level. Totally. However, somebody does it with breath work, with, yeah. with whatever. But many women don't know how to do that. And they wait until things are better before they take the bath. And the it science is saying you have to take the bath first. You have right. to take the bath before there's a problem so that when there's a problem, you're able to stay in your mature, adult, healthy self. Right. And so if women don't have good strategies and tools that they can use when they are um, having a panic attack or when they're in stressful situations, then um, you just end up hijacked and lost and screwed and everybody makes you go back into your triggering and then you do look like a bad mom and then you don't win and you look like a loser who's broken and, you know, caused all these problems. So that's one reality. And the other one is when you regulate then people look to you as the leader in the room because everybody else is having drama and you are level. And this is what the holidays can be like. You yep. can either go in and try to keep everybody happy or disassociate and drink or, you know, get into fights or whatever right. you do or not invite anybody. That's the old path. The new path is you get yourself into as healthy, balanced, loving, supported place as you can. And then you're able to create a loving, supportive space right. for your holiday. And people will respond to that because you've got the secrets of the nervous system and they don't. Right. So they're coming in stressed out and you're like, oh, no, I know how to keep everybody balanced and level. And right. people have a good time. And I have lots of evidence for that, especially in my own life. You know, when I started to heal the relationship with my dad. It was always like, well, what are you doing here? And I don't want you here. And, you know, fine, we'll tolerate Christmas. We'll tolerate Thanksgiving. And I made the conscious effort to get into a grounded, loving space, honestly. And I could welcome him into my home. And that's when the family started to heal. Right. Is when I stopped reacting and I started being a leader. I started totally. to be the light. I have seen that happen, not only in my own world, but I've seen that happen in many people that I've helped along the way. Mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. really amazing yeah it can go down the crap road again or it can or it can be one of the best holidays you've ever had that's and why usually, i'm doing it between thanksgiving and christmas one, if you're the one in your world who is the brightest light mm -hmm. how this how all this trauma unpacks is that you then are the one that is suppressed 
because you make, you naturally, when you're the bright light, you're the one that naturally pushes, everyone pushes you down because you naturally make other people feel uncomfortable. Yes. So what I've noticed with many of the people who have had these traumas and, and are in these relationships that are super toxic, what, what it is, is the one who's actually feeling like they're stuck in the one experiencing the trauma or the abuse they're the ones that are actually the brightest light and I want you to think outside of the box so those of you who are watching I want you to think outside of the box because when you're the brightest light and you're playing the game of being the submissive or the one who's abused you on a soul level I truly believe that you have called in this person that you are doing this dance with on a soul level, not, not on a personal level, but on a soul level so that you actually, they will keep pressing your buttons and it will get worse and worse and worse and worse until you rise into your greatness and be the bright light that you are to leave everybody out of it. Yes. You said like the minute you shifted, then your whole family shifted because mm -hmm. you're a super bright light. Mm -hmm. And I see this over and over and when you are the bright 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 light mm -hmm. negative forces or trauma however you want to call it lower vibrations people in religion would call it the devil you know um this is what happens it's like the light versus the dark the angels versus the demons as crazy as that may seem on some level but i have noticed the ones who are the brightest lights are the ones who are traumatized the deepest and the most because yes. on a soul level, they've called in these people to play that role. So you can really rise up and be that amazing version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And the time's now to do it. I love, I think it's hilarious that I'm the person who's in the mystical field. You know, the one that has all the colors and the plants and the fire and the symbols and the everything. And I'm talking about science, the science of it. And you're the banker and you're talking about the <laughs> mysticism of it. And what that proves to me and should prove to everybody is that this is how the world works. Yeah. The banker said this, the mystical person says it, you know, this is, this is how it works. Right. And, um, my banker with my pearls. Beautiful. I but love yet, I'm letting amazing. my freak fly fly. <laughs> exactly. Which is why you're good at what you do. Yeah. You know, and a long time ago when I first started to get, into my healing practice. I, you know, had my shiny new Shiatsu massage therapy license and I was trying to find some place to work. And, and I was working out of a spiritual center in, uh, nearby in Fox River Grove. And I would volunteer there. And there was another woman that would volunteer there. So it was all, you know, mystical energy towards the sorts of people. And she walks in and she says, I want to be the person that when I walk into a room, people heal. And I thought, well, that's crap. You know what I mean? At the time I, <laughs> I thought, that's not pot. Who do you think you are that you can walk into a room and people can heal? <laughs> 14 years later, I'm saying, yeah, that's exactly how it works. You know, mm -hmm. so when we have that alignment in ourselves, when our brain is working with our heart, is working with our gut, when our nervous systems in the correct nervous system, the parasympathetic, when right. we've got a good, strong community behind us, yep. you know, people who are relatively healthy. You walk into, I walk into a room and people heal. People heal thinking about coming to see me. Their right. healing starts as soon as they even just go, oh yeah, I get to see Rita on Wednesday, you know, or well, whatever it is. You know, Deepak Chopra talks about this all the time that we have our energetic body, which in, in his research, the left brain logical is called your subtle body. So it's your energy field around your physical body. And he mm -hmm. talks about how the reason we have deja vu and things of that nature is because of the fact that our energy body actually goes to where we're going before we physically get there. Mm. That's why, you know, in other teachings, like with Panash Desai, as an example, he says, change your energy, change your life. Because when you change your energy outside of yourself, then the, phys the physical world is actually what shifts last. Yes. And so that's why we have deja vu because like, before they come to a session with you, they're already in the work because they've decided yes. to energetically connect to you and energetic connect to how you work in the world. No different mm -hmm. than with me with money. Like 
people all of a right. sudden money stuff starts fixing itself the minute they literally in their mind go yeah i need to do that and even if it takes a month or two for them to call and get on my calendar or work with somebody in my office they're already starting that financial healing process yes. because yes. they've made the decision and they've energetically connected like and if you don't believe us like just google like energy body and look at the human body and the energy fields like science can now you know illustrate yes. all of that yes and i and i've got the science behind i've got science behind that one this is so fun and interesting so I knew, I've known people for a long time that do water ceremonies. They go and they bless the water. And it was like, oh yeah, that's nice. You're going to bless the water. I mean, really, I participated in all this stuff and I loved the ritual because I was Catholic, but I was like, yeah, okay, whatever. You know, and I always kept trying to find, you know, like the psychology behind it. And, you know, I never really bought in. And then I found out that they've started using water in computer chips. And the reason they use water in computer chips is because water holds a field around it of information. Yep. So they use them in these medical computer chips to store like a hundred times, a thousand times, 10,000 times, some crazy amount of information that you could actually store on it. So it, it, they became like super chips because right. they used droplets of water because the water had a field of information. Yep. We are what, 90% water? We're, we're some crazy percentage of water. And I sat there thinking, Oh my God, the field is real. The field is real because we have all this water in us. We're storing all of this information around us. Right. Mm -hmm. And when we start to make those shifts, when we start to change what we think and who we engage with and what we fill our field with, our environment with, it, it's like magic. It's like a magic pill. It really Everything is like changes. a magic pill. And it's just about mm -hmm. us opening to a new understanding of what is. Yeah. Yeah, right. that's really exactly. what it boils down to. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I just want to, you know, anyone who's watching, like, I think it takes a lot of courage to start to tune in and chime into what it is that we're talking about, because that means you've already taken the next right step mm -hmm. because you're like, oh, I'm intrigued by this. And yeah, I've got this, that, and the other thing going on. Like, just trust your knowing trust what is that next right step for you mm -hmm. and and know that you know a seven day challenge could be exactly what you need up your alley to say oh, okay yeah. I am going to do this challenge because I am going to shift something in my world not really sure what that shift might be but mm -hmm. I'm gonna shift it and you can do it really fast without a lot of time. I mean, basically what I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in all sorts of great world-class speakers who have a, you know, a piece of genius to share. And it's not going to be a long thing. It'll be like 15 minutes. It'll be like a half an hour, right. but it'll be, in, it, it'll, it'll be a, a, a genius that they bring to the table. And so women can come and listen to anybody that they want, you know, on certain days right. we'll have certain topics. And the only thing we'll do is that night we'll do either together or separate a group, an hour long group healing session. And uh, all that is, is when emotions come up, we clear them and we nourish ourselves with something that's, that's more beautiful and helpful and, and, and life-giving to us. And so it's, it's a conscious intent. I have a rule in those hours, any negative thought, any negative feeling that comes up, I immediately clear it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even go into the story. I don't even ask, oh, I just called myself a failure. Okay, we're going to clear it. Yep. Oh, I feel in my heart that I'm depressed. Okay, we're going to clear it. And if we, if someone yeah, does you know, that. You know what, here's the thing. We always like wanted to go down the suffering pattern of well, why did this happen? And who is right. it? Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Enough. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. 10 why. years later, you're matter. still in therapy, telling the same story about how you've got daddy issues or mommy issues or somebody was a narcissist. 10, 20, 30 years later, you're still yeah, telling the same story. You don't need to know why. You don't need to know who. You don't need to know. You don't, that's just your ego. You got to understand that when mm -hmm. it goes from, oh, I'm a failure. Like that's how you're feeling. That's your heart. Mm -hmm. Then it goes to your head and that's your ego mind. And that's what we yeah. need to just go, no, 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 yeah. no. Like yeah. let's drop back into here and just release the feeling. Yes. And that's what you did in court. 
You know, every time that something came up, you just let it go. I just went, whoop, whoop. Yep. I did. And it was, it ended up super successful for you because you ended up being the leader in the room and your energy was affecting everybody else's energy. And okay. you were helping everybody else stay regulated because right. the reason that, um, the, the reason that the healer is one of the most important people in a healing session, even, even though everybody's like, Oh, I'm not doing anything. I'm just a hollow bone, blah, blah, blah. Well, that's true. But my regulated nervous system is going to regulate somebody else's nervous system. Mm -hmm. So when they get into my physical space, my energy, my mindset, what I nourish myself in will calm them down and right. center them. Yeah. And so and it does. you can turn Christmas into something that's cool and Zen and wonderful. And you'll be like, how the hell did this happen? Right. It's because you walk in, in your beautiful feminine energy in wholeness. Absolutely. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and then it creates more, what I call real wealth for all of us. Yeah. So that's like true happiness. You know, like my ex-husband yeah. and I will talk and go, you know what? We really both are happier not married anymore we're both mm -hmm. happy mm -hmm. and we're finally in that space where we can say that mm -hmm. you know even though it's mm -hmm. it was scary and mm -hmm. you know and it was not easy for us nor the kids but everybody's happier mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. a big deal and not everybody's happier after they divorce because they don't work on the issues that got them into the relationship in the first place they just think i divorced you so now my life will be fine, but it's not, you're still going to trigger, you're still going to get hijacked. And if you don't know how to handle it in a way that's quick and efficient without going into a story, then it's going to be the re same relationship after the same relationship, every same relationship. Oh, sorry. Exactly. <laughs> There's a drill going on outside and I was like, oh, let me mute that really quick. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I hear you. Oh, I can't hear it. So that's good. That's good. That is good. Yeah. You know so, what? So tell people more about how can they get to your seven day challenge? Okay. So, um, around, uh, around the Thanksgiving, uh, time I'll start putting, I'll start marketing it. I'll start putting it out and I'll have a, um, a Facebook page for it. I'll invite people to join the Facebook page. And then, um, I'm thinking it'll start the Monday after Thanksgiving and that Monday, well, uh, people just have to show up. They can listen to whatever speakers they want to. It can be little bite-sized 15 yep. minutes. I'll have maybe like three or four speakers for the day. Mm -hmm. I, I completely suggest that people don't do all of them. I suggest you just do one small piece. Do what Pick you're drawn the one to. that you like. Yeah, do yep. what you're drawn to because that's the next right step. Because if you do things out of order, and this is the trick that they don't teach you, when you do things out of order of what's right for you, then it doesn't really work. Oh, it never works, right? Mm -hmm. And you mm -hmm. have to trust that. Like you, mm -hmm. you absolutely know when it's in the right order for you. It's not, even if you get a pause or you get to your head and you get anxiety, something, right? Mm -hmm. And we need to listen to the body intelligence that is screaming mm -hmm. at us as to what is that next right answer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then what we do is, you know, after you've gotten a new piece of information about, you know, how to live a, a really healthy, mystical, successful life, and you're like, yeah, that's great. Wouldn't that be nice? I wish that were right for me. <laughs> <laughs> we then, we, we get together, as I said, separately or, or at the same time or however, you know, it fits. And we integrate that information. And we let go of the beliefs and the emotions that get in the way that keep us from, from allowing that information to come in. And through that experience of regulating your nervous system, getting rid of the emotional chemicals, which keep you feeling crazy and hijacked, um, the next right step comes to you. We spend right. so much time trying to figure it out in our head. What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? What should I do? Right. What should I do? What right. And it's obsessive. Whereas when you get new information, pause, allow it to integrate, allow it to process, then the solution and the answer for what's next arrives. You mm -hmm. don't figure it out. It shows up like, like a magic thought that happens to you. And I've been, I've been teaching and doing processing with people 
for a long time. It actually started when I didn't want to teach kindergarten. Mm -hmm. I was a kindergarten aide and there were like 27 in the morning, 28 in the afternoon. Kids were hiding under tables and bathrooms and smearing things on the wall. I was horrible. <laughs> it was insane. <laughs> And uh, I said, I, I got to get out of here. And so I found a job teaching outdoor environmental education in Wisconsin at George Williams College. And part of what I did was team building. Uh, and in team building, you have the experience and then you have the processing. And the processing is more important than the experience. Right. So maybe you climb up a tree or maybe you walk across the board or whatever. Yeah, that's great. And maybe it all fell apart and nothing worked and everybody failed. There was no right. success. The genius is when you take that time every night that we're going to do during the challenge and process through and regulate through, because then instead of blocking the information. Yeah. So it makes it like experiential. Your yes. You're able to actually absorb it, integrate it, um, get the things out of your way, which keep you from taking action. So it's about not next really right only step. processing it in your brain. Mm -hmm. but you're processing it through your physical body. Yes, I cannot exactly. stress to everyone who's watching that that is so important the most because important. your body knows and your body has stored everything. 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 Mm -hmm. It's in your cellular structure and it's crystallized. All those unprocessed emotions are mm -hmm. all crystallized actually in your physical body. Mm -hmm. Measurable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They have instruments that can measure it. They've got uh, research behind it. Yeah, what you say isn't just Julie, you know, coming up with something that some shaman told her, you know, because he, <laughs> he, you know, he channeled it from the planet Zorg. You know, it's, it, this is like, no, this is, this is, it's repeatable. <laughs> and that, <laughs> do you see how cynical I always <laughs> I know exactly what you were talking about, too. <laughs> I know. I know. You know, all this stuff sounds like a bunch of hoo-ha. And on some level, it is because nobody understood how it really worked. So they just came right. up with metaphors to explain yeah, it. They came right. up with, you know, let go and let God. Well, what does that look like? How am I supposed to do that? It seems too we esoteric for people. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And we're bringing it down. They've, science brought it back down to, no, this is what you actually do. These are the steps. So in the seven weeks, I'm going to introduce women and support them and encourage them to do these steps. And they will find, even within the first few days, that they think clearer, they problem solve better, they're more intelligent, they're more intuitive, yep. they stay level. Yep. Um, and when, when this process becomes just a healthy habit, a healthy yep. life habit, then you will, success will be coming out your ears because you are the only one who's going to be the leader in the room because you've got your, your nervous system regulated and everybody else is going to be in the crazy. Right. And so naturally people look to someone who's calm and centered as the leader and they want to follow them. That's true. So when you're calm and centered, suddenly you're going to find yourself with opportunities and successes that you never expected. Well, again, going back to that, we have this energy field around us. When you change your vibration, you're mm -hmm. going to attract more of what it is that you want to create in your life as opposed to what you don't want to create. Because yeah. remember, our brains have two operating systems. Mm -hmm. There's the conscious and then the subconscious. Mm -hmm. And 97% of the time, science has proved that the subconscious mind is actually running the response system, not the mm -hmm. conscious mind. We wouldn't consciously mm -hmm. do some of the things that we do in our lives. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Like, why would anyone logically actually stay in a trauma-filled relationship? Nobody right. would consciously choose that, but you're like, how do I get out of this? I don't know how to get out of this. Why? Because your subconscious mind is running the show. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we have to interrupt those processes and we have to get you then to a healthier place. Well, mm -hmm. I am so yeah. grateful that you're doing this seven-day challenge for people because I think we need it like air right now. Mm -hmm. and I think exactly. So how do people find the seven day challenge? Where okay. Can well, they can, go, it's not up on my website yet. It's Rita Hickman And uh, within the next week or two, I'm going to start marketing it on Facebook. So you can find me on Facebook, Rita Aiken Hickman. Um, I've got a couple pages. I've got my personal thing. All of it's open. You can follow it. Mm -hmm. Keep your eyes open for the marketing. It's going to be a free challenge. Um, and it's, 
it, it's breaking the pain pattern mm -hmm. and putting a new healthy habit in place that right. will work way faster than people ever expect it to. Yep. You know, it doesn't take 10 years to heal yourself anymore. It takes a few months, you know, it doesn't take long before changes happen. You started to make really great changes just after totally. when super know, fast. one or two sessions. Well, and as you start doing it, it goes faster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? Because the new life that you're creating shows up at lightning speed. The more you take the steps forward. Mm -hmm. and, exactly. and also wanted to share with everybody, don't forget, go to juliemurphy.com because I'm giving away a free copy of my book. In the next couple of weeks, I am um, launching. Um, it's time for our country and our world to financially heal. And so yeah. I've decided that all you have to do is pay for your own shipping for the book. Um, and I want to get that out to everybody so that we can start. My book actually walks you through the process that I walk individuals with to create exactly the life they want, not only from a financial perspective, but how to then ask the questions about things in your work life and your family life and your relationships and your mm -hmm. personal life, because it all is interconnected. We cannot mm -hmm. separate who we are as human beings. Like, well, I'm just going to deal with my money like this, but personally, my relationships are a pile of poop. That's not how it works. Like, it, mm -hmm. people are always like, oh, the relationship stuff will fix itself. I'm just going off for my career. Well, great. You don't work on the relationship stuff. You're getting a divorce and you're splitting your money in half. Uh, you don't that. realize, like, there is a ripple effect. That's why I think the process to really embody what I call real wealth is all about building your life from the inside out, from those heart's desires at whatever season of life that you're in. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're my financial planner, because you help <laughs> me with, you, you help me embrace the mystical stuff right. that I resist, you know, because I'm, yeah. I'm science-based in a mystical world and you're mystical based in a science-based world. And it's like, I yes, you're exactly, well you're exactly what I'm missing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Well, Rita, thanks so much for another week of Awaken thank Your Relationships. You. I am super thank grateful. You. You're, yes, thank you. you and everyone, please come join us again next Thursday, 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. We will be here. Thanks, everyone. open for the challenge. We'll do it. <laughs> See you later. Bye. Bye.